Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to learn how to detect and prevent size problems in your Microsoft Access database before it crashes. Because we all know that Access has a two gigabyte file size limit, but it doesn't always tell you that it's approaching it. So I guess we could say that Access has size issues too, right, fellas? Anyways, let's get to today's question. Today's question comes from Russell in Dublin, Ireland, one of my platinum members. Russell says, yesterday I came into the office and the whole database looked dead. Nobody could log in and Access kept giving me this vague message that said the database was corrupted or not recognized. I wasted almost an hour checking permissions, rebooting the server, and trying to find out what broke. Eventually, I looked at the backend file and realized it was almost two gigabytes. I compacted and repaired it, and it got it back down to around 900 megabytes, but now I'm nervous it's going to happen again. Is there a way to have access check the file size every night and warn me before it gets too big? Well, yes, Russell, this is a common problem when you start pushing that two gigabyte limit. And the worst part is access doesn't give you like one consistent error when the file starts getting that full. Maybe we should add it to our, our list of uh, our wish list for the access developer team, right? Whatever you happen to be doing just simply stops working. And the message you get might have nothing to do with file size. You know, when access is filling up, it rarely, it rarely tells you that hey, the database has reached the maximum size or whatever. Uh, a lot of times you'll get a vague message like the database is corrupted or not recognized, could not open the file, or access just refuses to save the data. I've seen forms that just look weird because they can't read or write to the tables. None of those messages scream file size, but the back end is like, you know, 1.9 gigabytes. And I can also fill up with, you know, temporary data too. If, you, if you're doing any kind of action queries in the background, right? Make table, append queries, all that stuff. Those temporary tables can also fill up your file sizes. And until you compact, you don't get that, sp that space back. So it's important to compact regularly. I'm not a fan of, of compact on close. Um, you know, depending on your database, once a week is usually good enough, but it's also handy to have something in place that can check the file size. You know, maybe when you do your compact routine, have it just look and say, Hey, this file's up to 1.4 gigabytes. You might want to do something about it. We'll talk about what you can do about it later. But first, let me show you a real easy way to just have an access database. Check how big it is. But before we get to that, this is going to be a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. And go watch my status box video. This is what I use to put little messages on the form there. We're going to use that to display the message. I like this better than, than message box. And you should know how to work with variables. And you should know how to create your own functions. Today, we're going to create our own function to check the file size and return that value in gigabytes. So if you've never made your own function before, go watch this video. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch those all and come on back. All right. So here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a function that's going to just check the size of, of any file. You can give it any file you want. Um, and just specify your backend files file name, right? And then it will check it. Whenever this database loads, it'll go check that file. And if you got multiple backend files, you can check those too. So let's write our helper function to go and figure out the file size of any file uh, in gigabytes. So let's go down here to our global module. Let me resize this guy. There we go. And right down here, we're going to put our new function. So we'll make it a public function public so that everybody in the database can use it, right? I'm going to call it get file gigabytes. It's going to return the file size in gigabytes because I, I don't really care like to the byte or even to the megabyte. I just, you know, 1.5 is enough for me. If it's getting bigger than that, I want to know about it, right? If you want it more granular than that, if you want it in megabytes or kilobytes or whatever, you can change it easily. You'll see in just a minute. All right, we're going to send into it a file path as a string. So the full path and file name of your database file or whatever file you want. We're going to return a double. All right, remember I said there's really two types of numbers you should ever worry about when working with Microsoft Access. There's long integers and doubles. Ignore everything else. 
right? If it's a counting number, use long integer. If it's got a decimal fractional point, use double. Forget all the rest of them until you're much, much later on and need the different types for a specific reason. I cover all those specific reasons in my developer course. And I think I got some other tech help videos on them too, but double and long integers is all you gotta worry about. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I need the file length of whatever file path you sent in. Now there's a, a function built in the VBA called file len. So we're gonna say get file GB equals file len of file path. Now file len returns the number of bytes in a file. So that's gonna be a long number and it's gonna be a long integer, but that's okay. VBA is really good at uh, type casting. So even though this returns a long integer, this will convert it just fine to a double because we've declared it as a double up here. If you want to specifically do that, you could put CDBL out here and, and put that in parentheses, but you don't really have to, all right? So if it's a, you know, if it's a one megabyte file, you'll get a number in here like one, you know, two, zero, four, blah, 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 whatever. Now we're going to convert the number of bytes to gigabytes with just some easy division, all right? So it's going to be get file GB equals get file GB, right? divided by 1024 now everybody thinks it's a thousand right because you know kilo is a thousand of that and then mega is a thousand kilo and then gig is a thousand but it's actually 1024 in computers it's you're, you're dividing and multiplying by 1024 why because it's a perfect square that's a long theory story but don't worry about it all right so that'll make it kilobytes then divide it again to make it megabytes and then divide it again to be gigabytes, right? So we'll convert to gigabytes. So now we got a number. If it's a you know 1.5 gigabyte file, you'll get 1.5 at this point. And I don't want all those decimal, I just want like two decimal places. So we're gonna say get file GB equals round get file GB comma two. We're gonna round to two decimal places. Okay, and that's the value that'll get returned. Okay, so we'll call this, we'll give it our file path, and it'll send back a number like 1.6. All right, so now we just gotta go wherever we wanna put this. Let's just stick it in a button for now. All right, let's go back out here. Let's go into our main menu. We'll just, we'll just hijack this hello world button. All right, get file size. Okay, right click, build event, and we'll just put in here, uh, you know, status, and then we'll be checking. All right, now I want to get the file size of a particular file, okay, and display its size, let's say. But I'm gonna make a variable to put it in first. So I'm gonna dim D as a double, and I'm gonna say D equals get file GB, and then you want the file path of a file, you know, your, your backend file or whatever file you wanna check. All right, I happen to know on my, my uh, my network, I've got a Z drive. That's where my database is. It's Z drive and then it's message archive dot ACCDB. This is a pretty big file. I think it's about 600 megabytes and it's literally every customer service email that I've received via my website for the past 20 years. So when people tell me that they've got, you know, they're, they're, they're running out of space. Well, you need to figure out why your, your table so big because I got 20 years of emails in this one table. <laughs> that's the message archive. Right, I got the main message table in my database, and then after a year, they get they get sent to the message archive. Anyways, I'm just picking, that's the biggest ACCDB file I have on my network. All right, and then we're just going to, uh, let's just status it, right, status. The size is going to be and D, right? That's where we put the, the size and, and then gigabytes in quotes. And then maybe a beep. Okay, see what we're doing? So we're gonna get the file size of that file, put it in D, and then we can message it. Do you need the D? No, you could throw this right inside of here, but this is just cleaner. It's easier to read, right? It's like uh, it's like when we did this before with, the, with that. Could we just divide it by that one big number? Yeah, but this is easier to understand what's going on. Just like this whole thing could be done in one line, but that's difficult to read. I'm all about making readable code. I'm, I'm not one of those guys, I've gotta compact my code into one line if I can. You leave that to C++ programmers. Okay, anyways, let's go back to this. All right, this looks good. Let's debug, compile once in a while. And then we'll come back out. Meow. 
and we'll close it and save it and open it and it moves. <laughs> I have code that actually positions it on the screen for recording videos. All right, hit the button, ready, go. Boom, there we go. Size is 0.62 gigabytes and that is correct, I double checked. Okay, and so what you'll basically just do now is you can run it manually if you want every time you, 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 you log in or when you open the database, right? You could put this inside your on open event or your on load event for the form, right? So come back here, maybe if you want this to be automatic, come into your forms events. I got several different videos on form events, right? I already have an on load event in here. This is for me, this is my load app window position. It positions, like I just said a minute ago, it positions the window. But after that, right, we can say check DB file size in here, and then we'll make another subroutine, right? Private sub check DB file size. And in here, we'll do this stuff. Watch, we'll take this. Well, we don't need the beep. We'll take this stuff, right? We'll stick it up here. And then you could display that every time if you want, just so that you know when the database is loading, it's doing its job. And you could say something in here like if D is greater than 1.5, then, you know, uh, we, well, we would just uh, status, you know, compact soon or whatever. You could have it play bells and whistles and sing an opera or I've got, uh, I got my database. So it plays lots of Klingon sounds and stuff when things happen. <laughs> I got a whole separate video on playing sounds. Search for it on my website or on my YouTube channel. You'll find it. Okay. So, uh, now we'll, we'll save it. Actually, we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to say check DB file size right there. So the button does the same thing now too, right? The button will say checking and then it'll do this and then it'll come back here and beep. All right. All right. Save it. Debug compile. Let's close it. Open it. And now notice, look, when it ran, it says size 0.62 gigabytes. Everything's good. Okay. Let's change that. Let's say it's got to be, um, more than 0 0.5, right? 500 megs. And now when I run the database, burp, compact soon, you can have it, you know, throw up whatever flag you want, open a big warning message, play a sound, play a rush tune, whatever you want to do, right? And now you'll be notified, hey, this day, this file's getting pretty big. You might want to compact that, okay? And then you can call this for each backend file you want. If you got six backend files, just call it for each one of those. If you got a log file, that's a text file on your network and you want to check the size of that. I have a couple of those. Just, you know, put whatever size you want in there and it'll, it'll check it for you every time you log into the database, All right? It's not that hard. It's the file len function. Where are you? Come back here. This guy. There's several different ways to check the length, the size of a file. That's the easiest one. And I teach more about that in my Access Developer Series. In Lesson 31, we cover file len. Let's see what do we got. It's uh, navigating files and folders, the dir function, there's file and copying files, all kinds of stuff, compacting your backend files automatically. There's all kinds of cool stuff in this video. This is, I think, part two. We're doing classic VB file handling. Uh, we got, what do we got? Part 30. Let's see. We got, oh, reading and writing text files. There's all kinds of stuff. You name it, I cover it. Now, members, what we're going to do in today's extended cut is we're going to write a routine that will automatically check all of the backend files for every table in your database. Because I know sometimes I'll create a new file, like put a table in it, and then I'll attach it to the database. And then I'll forget that I added a new table. And I'll forget to put it in this check routine. So this will just go through all of the uh, linked tables in your database. And for each one of those, it'll check its backend file. So if you add new ones in the future, you don't got to worry about adding them to your routine. I'm all about future proofing, right? When you add something like this, you got to think to yourself, hey, I might add new tables, you know, from different backend databases in the future. I might want to check those too. So we'll do that in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, not just this one, all of them. Gold members get access to the code vault. You can download the databases from the videos, all kinds of extra perks. Everybody gets some free training. And uh, yeah, lots of cool stuff. But that's gonna do it for your tech help video for today. Russell, I hope that answered your question and I hope the rest of you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. 
Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mention in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.